Hi, I'm Sarah Long. I'm professor of pediatrics at Drexel University College of Medicine and chief of infectious diseases at St. Christopher's Hospital for Children in Philadelphia. My topic today is controversies in diagnosis and therapy of neonatal sepsis. And the objective is for you to be able to plan the strategy for management of term and preterm infants with concern for early onset septicemia. And I'll give you just the bottom lines. I think if there's anything that you would want to read that has happened in the last year about this, it would be the commentary by Bennett's, Wynn, and Poland in the Journal of Pediatrics in 2015. So here what are their bottom lines and my bottom lines of considerations for management of early onset septicemia. The first thing is obstetrical interventions to prevent early onset sepsis are effective and have changed this landscape drastically in the last 20 years. The second, an infant with persistent, progressive, moderately severe signs of illness should get empiric therapy. An infant with mild or moderate respiratory signs immediately after birth, however, may be able to be observed for resolution within six hours without treatment and that infant obviously should be treated within six hours if something changes in the clinical course. A rapid diagnostic test that has exquisite sensitivity and exquisite negative predictive value would be great in the realm of early onset sepsis. So we could define who has it and who doesn't, but such a test does not exist. In the meantime, Preterm infants, defined here as born at less than 34 weeks gestation or less than 1,500 grams, we know have an increased risk of early onset sepsis. In those infants, you should consider until there are more data on the value of the risk factors that you should use them. So if there are maternal risk factors, if there are clinical or laboratory risk factors that this neonate is infected, the infant should be receiving antibiotics. Keep in mind that most infants, 80 to 100%, who actually have a positive blood culture or early onset sepsis will have clinical signs and can be treated. On the other hand, a preterm infant who is well and has no risk factors, one could consider serial monitoring and serial tests rather than the initiation of antibiotics at the time of birth. Furthermore, a well-appearing late preterm infant or term infant with or without risk factors for early onset sepsis, let's say chorioamnionitis in the mother would be one, can be closely observed clinically. And that's because there's poor sensitivity of risk factors for early onset sepsis. And in order to accommodate all of the possible risk factors, one would have to treat thousands of infants who didn't have sepsis with antibiotics, treat them with antibiotics for the one who actually had the infection. And finally, most infants treated for early onset sepsis, even with selective strategy, are not infected. Upwards of 90, 95%. Serial normal laboratory test results could lead to early stopping of those antibiotics at less than 48 hours if the infant remains well. And in well-appearing infants who have negative culture at 48 hours, an isolated laboratory test result that's abnormal should not prolong antibiotic therapy beyond 48 hours. So it's an assessment of risk factors, age of the baby, and most importantly, the clinical examination with laboratory tests having a very minor role in this regard. And while we are dealing with the disability that we currently have, these authors felt that it was very important as we implement novel strategies for ascertainment and treatment in late preterm and term infants that we should be very cautious so as not to have unintended consequences or harm. Thank you.